Hello and welcome to the Arsenal Way. Back again with you guys for another show for a special episode. Today I'm joined by Mr. Sir Mo Farah. How are you doing, Mo? Are you well? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. Good stuff. Now, Mo, is, as you may be able to tell from his background, just a small Arsenal fan. Uh, very, very I light. Rarely, rarely goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, absolute pleasure to have you on, Mo. How are you doing? Is uh, life well? I know that you missed, the, obviously, the London Marathon recently, which must have been gutting, but how's the recovery going? Yeah, no, obviously, I've got to miss it, uh, but I was injured beforehand and I wasn't mm. ready. And uh, as you know, taking part in London Marathon is something, you know, I look forward to one day hopefully mm. but this year now wasn't to be and obviously Tokyo plus you know missing out um, but it was nice to see some athletes you know doing well and particularly the Brits mm, absolutely and of course we are here to talk about your love of Arsenal Football Club um, because as we said most just a little bit of a, an Arsenal fan and I want to start really at the beginning Mo, and talk about kind of where the love comes from and, and why you got into to Arsenal specifically so just just take the golden ticket and go for it mate yeah, often, you know, a lot of people ask me that question. You, what do you support? It's like, Arsenal? Or you're like, oi. Where, where's that come from? Because growing up in West London, you know, it was different. Um, I grew mm. up a uh, place near Felton, uh, Hounslow. Um, probably closest ground to us is probably Brentford. And at the time, I was at school and often, you know, in my household, there was a, there was a lot of different, you know, obviously family support in United, you know, the older generation, Liverpool. Mm. And for me, you know, going to school and growing up, I just remember, you know, the way Arsenal played and the key players, for, you know, Paul Merson, Ian Wright, Tony Adams, the era of, you know, the players and the way they played. And, and for me, I just remember going, I love that the way that team is the way the, the way mm. they you know conduct themselves and and play we weren't winning at, at league at that time you know we were close um and at that point i was just like you know what Ar arsenal and then ever since then you know i haven't looked back but mm. I, I do remember make it clear you know if it, it wasn't for the players or, or seeing them you know as a, as a team had they played then we would have made that choice because often you know growing up there's always it's one of this debate, you know, you I have kids now and, and, and my kids, because I'm into Arsenal so yeah. much, they are into it. And often in the household, whoever supports what team, often the kids do end up, you know, supporting that team. It's a small percentage of people that go outside there. And I, mm. I was one of them. And, and to me, football is everything. Because as a growing up, as a kid, all I ever wanted to do is play football. And, um, mm. you know, that was never good enough. Good thing I definitely chose what position back. what position was your favorite go on right back right back. <laughs> i finished my career at right but i played like most of the time was a striker and then yeah. as, as i got older it was a case of i'm not good enough to be a striker anymore so right <laughs> <laughs> right back was always the one loving tackling that was what it was <laughs> yeah but with me you know you, you had skills and you know it you got it but i didn't have a clue yeah. i didn't have a clue and and honestly because of my speed and my natural ability to put me in the wing yeah. Happen to go, you know, go forward, cross the ball, head it out and go forward. They can, they can, they can put me in there. And it's not mm. professional level, but, you know, I was kind of, yeah, I'm in, in a, I'm in the local football team. That was so did that link to any kind of favourite player in the position or was it very much other areas that you, you lent towards for the favourites? It was always other areas for me. It was, you know, you know, oh God, I can say, yeah, probably like seeing it, Thierry Henry, Ian Wright. Mm. That was for me, you know, I always wanted to be a striker. I could never be a striker because I was never good enough because, you know, I can't kick with both feet, but you go past the team and probably goes on the other side. Yeah. Um, but for me, striker, midfield, um, you know, over Mars, over the year. There's a lot of players that you know, I looked into and, and even at the back, you know, where, as you said, like, era of, you know, Tony Adams, uh, Lee Dixon. You know, there's a lot of great players who come from that. And, and I think often for me, if I were to think back and go, what was your best moment? What was that? And that was that team, you know, invisible. Mm. Yeah, I think what's interesting are the players that you name, and obviously from a bit of a bygone era now, and Arsenal's changed so much. And unfortunately, it's not of that level as it was 
back then and, and the position in the table, the amount of trophies, the type of trophies that we've won in, say, the last decade obviously differed massively. So how has your fandom changed kind of in the last decade plus? Obviously, you've been able to get to more games and stuff like that. that that's an interesting line, actually, because when you're competing in, in all of the competitions, you must have missed a hell of a lot of Arsenal games. So how oh, painful was that? <laughs> it, it was really painful. Um, yeah. You know, the derby and, and, and being at training camp and knowing you got a race, you can't go to it. And often, you know, you've got to put your job forward. Um, and if I didn't put in a work and put, gone out to training camp mm. and been away, I could never perform at my best. So often you do have to put in the work. And I was gutted at times, but, you know, we, we've got season to go. I was lucky enough um, and we've had it for man, um, many years. And often I share with my kids and if I can't make it, my wife will take my uh, one of the kids and we alternate. And often, you know, mm. I don't have to go with them, but we go pretty much all the matches that we can. A lot of times my son um, last couple of years has been going and, and, and my daughter's, you know, the, from the oldest, she's 16 now, mm. um, and to the twins. So often we do swap, but now I'm f home. Yeah, I'm, I'm going, I'm going a lot more. Have you been to, I've been to, obviously it's difficult and it's very different, but have you been to away games? Have you experienced the away game environment? I've never been away game. You know what? I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to one going one away match and uh, I'm kind of timing up on the 20th of November where I'm going to go to away to Liverpool. Um, yeah. We play at Anfield and I thought, you know, for my first away game, I want to go experience what Anfield's like. Yeah, obviously, I'd be, you know, supporting Arsenal, but. Of course. You, you know, to see, and I'm going to take my son there and actually yeah. make it like a good weekend hopefully you know stay in a hotel just the whole lot yeah it's an experience in itself is is traveling for for arsenal and going to those away games so i'm sure that you will absolutely love it but going back to that original thread and experience arsenal in more recent times as things have, have not been necessarily the same you get towards the end of the arsenal wenger era go through yeah. Naimari, and now we find ourselves with Mikel arteta in charge how how, from your fan perspective, did you see kind of the end of the Arsene Wenger era through to where we are now? Do you feel like the club went down the right route with the appointments that they made? Or would you, from your fan perspective, have, have gone differently? For me, as a fan or as a sportsman, um, I think there's two different things. As a fan, you would love to, quick decision, bang, bring in someone. And, and that's the way we see it as a fan. Mm. As a sportsman, knowing what goes into it and what comes out on the other side is, is totally different. Um, as a fan, I would say, listen, is, this is rubbish. This needs to change. We need to bring someone in. Yeah. And that's how I say as a fan, as a sport, as a sportsman who experienced the highest level, I would say it, it, it's difficult. It's difficult because we never really, in a way, kind of appreciate what Wenger did as a, as a club and, and how he brought and what we won with him. Obviously, we were finishing, if we look back, we were finishing fourth, Throughout the Premiership, I think that you know when when he was there, we would never finish outside four, and we'd get in the Champions League. That mm. was always our bread and butter, and that's what we would did. And then when it's change, you know, it's been hard to fill that gap. And as a sportsman, I know it's not just about you know bringing certain players in, certain players in, and and make it work. We we're not that kind of club, and mm. and I see, and I think it's almost as you said, looking back and seeing what we do and getting all the team to build up together and, and come through and then kind of deliver on, on that note. And I can see it because it's been very exciting to see Zaka, the way mm. he's conducted himself. You know, I'm lucky enough to see him, you know, in, in, in training ground, see as a youngster and, and come through and to see what he how he's changing the team, particularly, you know, with, with the way he's been playing, Matileni. They've got, you've got a lot of youngsters. Smith Rowe. Um, so it's exciting. That that's what excites me because mm. I know as a sportsman I'm like, God, these guys are good and and and, and how they come from, you know, from youth to, to make it to senior and playing the way they are. Mm. That's what excites me. But as a fan on on the fan here on the side, I'm like, no, I need to bring him. We need the midfielders. Give him me. You know, <laughs> well, I, let's let's talk it from a fan perspective. You say we need midfielders like the summer. There's a lot of polarizing players in the Arsenal team. Well, we we love the youngsters. We get on board with the kids like Smith Rowe and, and Martinelli and Saka coming through. But there are players within the in the side that you'd look at and you go that some fans would have very much liked to see. Say movement. Granite Xhaka in the summer looked like he could have gone to to Roma for much of that summer. You talk about a midfielder. 
how ingrained with the transfer market do you get? Do you, do you go down the rabbit holes of David Ornstein and Chris Wheatley going through all of the different rumours and, and who we might be signing? How much did you, you look into that sort of thing? No, you have to. And I think this is the question you have to ask as a club. You know, we ha we are competing against Man United, Man City, mm. Liverpool. And you know, what a game we saw on the weekend, you know, City against um, Liverpool and, and, and the way they played. So often you have to look at other teams and, you know, they got that key players in the middle or up front who can put away goals, you know, who, who can control the team. And as I said, we were lucky enough to see the experience over the years, you know, over Miles, Adams. Yeah. You know, it, it, we had the back four. Plus four great midfielders, Petit, Overmars, and then you looked at the Dennis Bergkamp, Ian Wright. You know, we, that team was, you know, incredible. And in a way, we've got to look back and go, to me, uh, I think I'll just see it. I was just like, think, how can we build that team back up again? So we need two key players to take control of it. And I feel like sometimes in midfield, we are, yeah, I don't know, lacking a bit. As a fan, <laughs> I want to push you for a name. Is there anyone out there in the world of football that you would like to see Arsenal go for? Mate, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. I think it, it, seeing them and actually seeing them with it with a club is difficult. I would mm. love to see a big name. I, I, I don't know, it could be from Juventus or the, mm. or the bigger clubs, a player that is full fully capable of controlling, you know, that midfield and and or in defence say we can rely on and often yeah. we did that with Arsenal we had we did. a lot of players who we can rely on you know even on the, on even if they're having a bad day you know they're going to give it so what do you think about the, the current coaching situation we've got Mikel Arteta who come in for his first managerial job and won an FA Cup in his first six months and a community issue very soon after an amazing achievement and since then obviously Arsenal finished in back-to-back -back eighth place finishes and it's very difficult and is definitely it's been divisive amongst the fan base as well either saying that we should stick with him and, and see this project through or saying that Arsenal need to be a competing at a higher level than this and we should look to someone else to come in so so where do you stand on, on the managerial situation right now to me um it's a tough one mate I mm. know as a sportsman what you put in is what you have on the other side and you have to put in the work there's yeah. no question for that Mikhail Teta is putting the great work and and what what he's done but is it good enough? That's the question we have to ask as an Arsenal, you know, as an Arsenal fans with ourselves. Is it good enough to compete against these clubs? And, and, and with the result, it's not good enough. Mm. And often something needs to change. I don't know what that is. Is it, yeah. is, is it as you said, is, is it the manager? Is it the players? Is it, you know, what, what do we need to bring? It's really hard, isn't it, to try and think. When I look look at the manager and I go, I see all the good things that we're doing, mm -hmm. especially in, in kind of transfers. You look at transfers over the last decade of Arsenal, we talk about it a lot on the show. The Arsenal, I feel, have, have wasted quite a lot of money. They've then seen players leave for nothing and they haven't been able to bring anything in for them. But in the last two years, you look at Thomas Partey coming in, Gabriel, yeah. Tommy Asu this summer, Aaron Ramsdale, uh, Ben White being ben signed. White. Right, yeah, so of yeah. course. And you see an English core as well, Ramsdale and Ben White coming through, Smith Rowe and Saka coming through as well. And that's that's great. And I can get on board with that. And I kind of want to see where this can go. And then at the same time, I look at, say, some of the results, like 5 0 away at Manchester City, really losing quite badly despite only being 2 0 against Chelsea, where I thought we didn't quite compete the same way we did against them on Boxing Day in 2020, where we smashed them 3 1. And you're thinking, why why can't we show that same, that same kind of vigor in, in the games this season? Is it down to the manager? Is it down to just the players? Do we need to bring in better players for the current manager? And it's difficult in split seconds because football changes so quickly it, yeah. from week to week. And it's 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 a crazy, it's a crazy sport. But the also the other thing, and we saw the fan reaction to the whole Super League scenario that happened earlier this year, and the protests that we saw outside the Emirates. Do you think that when you see the amount of money spent by Manchester City, by Chelsea, by um, Manchester United, do you think there is any hope that Arsenal can get back to competing with them whilst we're limited, I suppose, in what we're able to spend each year? Although we spent the most than any other team this summer. No, as you said, we spend a lot more money than you know what we normally do on average average mm. year or over, over the years. We, we, we know the place we sign. But as you said, you know, United, um, uh, Man City are spending tons more, and and in uh, order for us to compete compete with them, it, it's this it's a difficult one. There's a, it's definitely a hurdle there. 
you know, because mm. we can't compete with them, as you said, in terms of our, our club and, and what we do, you know. And, but to me, it's just feel like I think we can make it. We can put in hands in our pocket and dig in one more and, and try and, like, if it means even two players or a key player that can mm. fit in and know, you know, the role and, and can play well, in, in particular midfield, you know. Um, as you said, we've got Aubameyang up front, like I said, um, and Aubameyang scored on the weekend, played really well. Um, previous before that, you know, it, it wasn't quite, but I think he's now ready. Uh, mm. I feel like, um, you know, I, I, I've seen him, you know, since, you know, obviously having a little moment with uh, Arteta. feels like, you know, it's changing slowly now. And mm. I, I felt like, you know, that kind of, you know, gave him a little bit of, you know, doubt and, uh, in in his mind, I think. And often you do because, you know, uh, to, the, to the manager, obviously, as, yeah. as, as we all know what happened, got left out. And, and to him, I think, you know, we did miss him, we got left out, but, you know, managers make decisions and, and that's the manager's decision. But at the same time, we, we miss it and I feel like he's coming back out now and, and on, on the other side of the tunnel. Something I'm really interested in to talk about with you, because um, you could talk all the live long day about what's happening on the pitch, but Arsenal goes beyond just that. Arsenal's such a massive brand, and especially for fans all over the world, it's incredibly, it gets very tribal, we do as fans, oh, right. and we get de very defensive of the club. And what I think with social media as well is something that we like to talk about a lot. It's kind of some of the social impact of Arsenal online. As someone like yourself, a public figure, someone obviously you know, everyone's very much aware of and know your love of Arsenal as well, and very much you've got your own Twitter account and you're on social media, do you ever find yourself tempted to get involved with kind of debates? <laughs> you see a point of view, you're not tempted to go, no, you're wrong and this is why. <laughs> I, I, I do and often I do that and I try and get involved, but I, you also mm. kind of keep it on a professional level. Of course. Um, at the same time, you know, because often people, this is my thing. People don't quite understand. What is your understanding of that? And what is your understanding of this? It's totally different. If you ask two people the same question and say, how does that work? They will give you two different things. And often you mm. have to make a judgment of yourself and, and, and try and fix it. And often football is that way to me. And often I watch you with my son I, and I can see what's happening. So that's like, mm. but it's so much easier been on the other side and watching and cross your hands, have a cup of tea and, and, and seeing his team play and to criticise because it's so easily yeah. done because as a fan, we're just like, can you not do better? And then you actually go and do it yourself. It's hard. It's not easy as, as, as it looks. So often you, for me, just having my own experience of, you know, a high level competing, mm. I try and take a deep breath and, and take a pause and try and actually think about it and, 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 and see if, you know, how it happens. Do you think that from obviously being a sportsman that you, that I, I look at sometimes things and I think I was, I was listening to something that Darren Brown did and he talks about system one brain and system two brain where like your, your system one brain wants to react like that. Yeah. You see an opinion and you want to react. Your system two brain, you, you take 10 seconds to think about it and depending on your lifestyle and your, your career, you think about things in different ways. So from your perspective, you see like an opinion about a player, about a manager that you disagree with and your system one brain wants to go bang, I don't agree with that. This is why. And then from your perspective, do you ever look at it and go, look, if I was in his shoes coming from the, the point of view of a sportsman, yeah. this is how I would actually react to it. Yeah, there, there is. There's a lot of times I would react different. And, but obviously life skills and, and life experience mm. teaches you. You can't be that way because often as a human being, we're all the same person. It doesn't matter what I have achieved. We all have that reaction. If something happens, you go, ah, it's normal. Yeah. But then you, you learn to control it and and to con and, and deal with it better. And uh, you know, often even for kids, if, my, if some of the players at school growing up, oh, your team lost. No, they, they. But now you know, yeah, they lost. But you know, the next game they can do better. There, there's ways that we can deal with. And mm. uh, and often uh, I think, as you said, particularly you know, I spend a lot of time in Africa, East Africa, and we've probably mm. got the biggest fan in East Africa, Arsenal. Everybody yeah. else was. Well, so. And, you know, all the restaurants, bars, everything, you know, when the game's on, nobody talks, just all watching. And it amazes me. It's like raw areas mm. can tune the TV in and watch it. And they they understand it. And, and to me, I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe how many fans there is here. And that's mm. what amazes me because football brings everyone together. And I think, we, you know, it's almost 
anybody can play, I guess. It's so accessible now and the, the, the global kind of reach that football brings, especially in, in Africa, in Asia as well. Asia is a massive market yeah. now for football too. And so when decisions get made regarding kind of uh, the, the Super League scenario, which obviously is, was we saw the reaction from fans and the power of fans, do you, do you go, do you kind of subscribe to that feeling that the fans can genuinely have such a huge impact in the direction the club takes? Or do you think with how disconnected sometimes owners can be from the fan base that really those fans are only capable of putting across their view without it necessarily having an impact any way? No, as a fan, I think we can make a difference. And often that's the reason why we love our team and spend a lot of money in terms of, you know, having a season ticket and mm. going to matches and, you know, going out, you know, to watch them because we feel like we can make a difference with us contributing towards, you know, to the club. And secondly, the club being able to, you know, do things well. And often as a club, as an Arsenal, we stand for what we, what we are. And often I think we do try and, whatever way that is, try and keep our fans happy as well as, you know, keep the cup happy. And often we are doing that, which is, you know, great principle because often mm. as a football club, I've seen a lot of clubs in terms of just saying, look, you playing, you playing, and doesn't care what happens to you afterwards. Or certain players or certain yeah. youngsters, we, we, we get them in, see, get, get the best out of them, and then they're gone. We're not like that. And, and big belief in terms of Arsenal Wenger, what he did as a club and, and, and seeing him for me, the value of Arsenal, you know, is huge. Mm. And often, even if I say, oh, why are you signing now? Why are you signing now? You're not good enough. It's almost, you know, protecting the value. What do we stand for? And it's, I mean, it's always difficult when you when you see online as well kind of that clash of fans and i think we've, we've especially platforms you see like arsenal fan tv that can get very divisive amongst supporters you or like robbie <laughs> yeah of course like it's so you can see some of the opinions that get raised yeah. and you see you go through the comments of a video and it's like clashing online and it gets very vitriolic at times but at the same time like points do, do need to be raised. Like, you do need to put forward a point of view on a player. If you want to criticise, criticism is always fine. I think it's that you fine. would have... Even myself, you know, I've, I've been course, criticised yeah. over the years. Um, I've been... And I know at times, I've not performed at my best. And you put a hand up and you go, listen, I didn't. I didn't have a bad day in the office. Mm. That's where it was. You move on. But I think the the, key, the problem is, if it keeps coming back, it is a problem. But if, you, if it happens, then you're going to do... And often, I think we do criticise our clubs particularly <laughs> because we're such a fans it's not yeah. because you know when you want to put your down your club or you know put down players it's because we want to see them do better mm. and sometimes it's, it's, yeah. it's not the it's not the right way but often we are as a fan you're like no nah, this is not good enough i'm not paying and i i end up having conversations with you know other parents other kids other you know other ask members and you're like what do you think of it and i'm like yeah, to do not right, but just little things could change this there. And ah, nah, this got to go. He's got, and that's football. <laughs> do you, it's interesting because when you like the the perspective of going from he needs to go or we need to buy better. <laughs> when does criticism become cross that line? Like you, we talk about Robbie and AFTV, and we talk about some of yeah. the people that are maybe on the channel and say certain things, or even on here when we discuss players. From a sportsman's perspective, when does it become? When does it cross the line from criticism, which everyone can accept, it's yeah. constructive, to the to abuse? When does it across that? When does the line cross for you, mate? The line as a sportsman, we always going to face these issues because I think as a club, as a, we we try and entertain, you know, people, and that's what you do as I said, mm. as a club playing football, playing great football, thousands and millions of people watching, and me as my, myself competing at the highest level. You're always going to attract, and that's what's about. And people do have the right to be able to, you know, say things, certain things, because you know, but it's, it's right because they came watch you, they come do this. And even myself, you know, it's a grunt. And if I had bad race, I had bad race. And you, they can criticize you because, you know, they can't, they deserve to say that. But there's a line hmm. where you go, okay, that's it. Sorry, it didn't happen. That happened. And move on. And, but to keep coming and, and that, then that become abuse. And I think that's, that's the thing we have to, obviously, as we're learning now, uh, abuse can't just be physically being called name. It's, it's the way you get react to is the way you get handled that and there's many ways that we can't identify do you think enough 
gets done to combat it from a, like a social media perspective? I think the social media stuff, even myself, I've had, we've had a lot as an Arsenal fan. Mm, <laughs> Me yeah. personally, there's, you get a lot of comments, a lot of stuff, and I think we can protect it. Um, but you do need to, it's one of those things we do need social media because we need to get through the people who, you know, maybe not that have TV, but have certain things mm. and, and can stay top of it. And there's other bits where, you know, you the players or myself or others, you know, go, do get a lot of comments. Yeah, it's, it's it's how we kind of tackle it and how the company's Twitter or Instagram or how you manage I think, it. I think police. Twitter particularly, to me, yeah. tw Twitter is probably the worst one uh, as a, you know, to, to, to get abused because often mm. there's, there's a lot of people who can't say things to your face and can say it behind the keyboard. And that's the people that, you know, don't deserve. And often so easy to be said, like when we lose a game and go, He's this, this, this. It, no, that's not a fan. A fan will go and go, look, what happened? What do we need to do? And I kind of address it and see what it is, can make changes and, and come together, I think. Do you, do you see it being changed? Do you see it that a solution? Like people talk about identity being associated with accounts so that you they can should be, be. I think whoever yeah. has that account is, uh, ability, should be accountable for whatever they put in name, you know. Yeah, in, 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 or write about, and often I think, uh, as I said, social media, other stuff can we can make it stronger. When you apply something, you often get asked your address, everything else. Why can you not provide you know certain things that identifies as you? And I think that's mm. the only only way that we can protect our future. And and particularly, you know, there's a lot of youngsters who do see this nonsense, and to me, it's nonsense because you're like, it should be seen that. Huh? No, there's a lot of young about being able well. to go no matter what and watching your team, even you know, if it's raining, or I mean, that's a true fan to and mm. make that way and watch it. And yeah, at times they don't do well, and you're you didn't play well, and then you, you got to go back and go, didn't play well, what they need to do, and they kind of try and you know, get engaged more, but not the way we conduct ourselves on the with absolutely social platform absolutely um to, to close out the show i've got a couple more things bringing it back around to to more to, <laughs> to arsenal of course no but it's a really important discussion i enjoy talking about kind of the social aspects of things especially with, with sportsmen like yourself um the, the the season so far has been different uh three three losses to open things up three wins to follow a draw against brighton in obviously at the weekend how do you feel about the season and how do you see it playing out based upon what we've seen so far to me, if I can see the way Arsenal played against Tottenham, I'll, I'll be happy. And mm. as you said, like often, I, I was lucky enough to go to that, you know, when we won against Norwich. Yeah, we won against Norwich. But Norwich are bottom of the table, almost the bottom of the table. And, and, and watching that game, to me, I was like, we can put away three or four goals. And early on, we missed quite a lot of chances. And we did come away with three points. And, and I was happy with it. But then you kind of question and go, we played Norwich. Not as we played okay, but we didn't put away all them shots. And we're going to play against a bigger team. How are we going to win? And mm. I was like nervous and, and watching it. And then to see, you know, 3 0 up, 3 1 against Tottenham and that how they played, I was like, oh wow, where did that come from? Mm. A lot. Do you think that that do you think the difference that we saw against Spurs and then Brighton, because it was so attacking, so free flowing at times against Spurs and then against Brighton? Graham Potter set up fantastically well, three at the back system, pressed us really high, and we weren't able to escape. Yeah. Do you think, is is there a worry for you that the inconsistency that we see could stop us achieving the targets of us getting back into Europe? I think it could do, but it's one of these things, uh, I don't know, just from what I've experienced myself as a sportsman, mm. you know, if, you, if I had a bad race, it does affect on you. If you had a good race, it gives you more positive, it gives you more energy. And you, if, if you know you had a good race, you go into your next race going, I've got this, I've, I've had that. And I think now we've beaten Tottenham, we should have motivation. And, you know, you know looking and go a bit more, you know, head high, hold our sleeves and go, yeah, we can do it. If we've just beaten Tottenham, we can do it. And I think that will give them a lift in the team. Mm. And, and often, as myself, you are looking for them moments. 
I look for the moments like we saw with with Erdogan playing constantly oh. on the front foot. He runs so much. Like, he's, he's, I mean, I think he'd give you a good run for your money on, on a 10,000 meter. He would have definitely beaten me before, but now Erdogan. He just runs for days and I, I love that press from him. It's just for me that consistency that I want to see in the team week and week. I want to see a Tottenham performance against Brighton, against Palace next week and against Aston Villa the week after. It's just if we can get the consistency going under Arteta, there's a squad there and there's something there, there that, quite, yeah. yeah. So do, do, I'll, I'll finish you off by kind of the last, the penultimate question being: Is is your face still very much with Arteta to to push Arsenal forwards this season? It all depends on the result, and I think it's just mm. that players. To me, I was always a massive Wenger fan. I honestly, when Wenger left, I was mm. you know it, there would have been a right time for him to go, but when he went and the way he went to me as a sportsman, I don't, I, he, he never deserved it. And I've always like keep him in till we get someone else. And then we obviously yeah. had a couple of managers, Arteta coming in, been you know assistant to Paddy um, the Man City manager, um, and having that experience. And he's he's done amazing. But now is how it's all about getting the best out of the players. Yeah. And I think often the manager always get criticised and manager out. It's not always the manager's fault. It's about being able to control the players and and getting the best out and at the players but how do you do that without stepping the marker that's the trick is it's tough how do you how do you attack a side how do you break down a team like Brighton when they're so hard to break down how do you change the systems in order to get the best from your players and Arteta has been here for a while now and yeah. it's still for me it's still uncertain if he can do it in the long term there's yeah. bright sparks I mean we used to struggle so much against those top six sides and he's changed <laughs> that we've he's gone changed. to We've gone to United and won for the first yeah. time since 2006. We went to Stanford Bridge and won since the first time since, I think, 2013 in the league. There are changes, there are positives, but there's still things that do need to improve, yeah. for sure. And man, I think that our chat today has definitely highlighted a lot of that. Now, final question um, from my, from the Arsenal Ways content editor, Arsenal Chris Ways. Davison. <laughs> Always. Um, he's asked uh, a very interesting question to finish the show. He says, Mo, if you could do the whole I'm a celebrity, get me out of your experience again, and you could take one Arsenal player with you, past or present, who would you pick and why? You're right. All the way. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you right? Because you know, in, being in the jungle was kind of like you had to find a lot of, ha lot, lot of time in your hands, and mm. you, you got to do, you know, you got to do things. Otherwise, you'd be sitting there still. And if I take Ian right, he'd just be laughing, be cracking the whole time, right? And we could always <laughs> be talking about Arsenal. Oh, so what's that moment like? <laughs> It's a, it's a fair answer. I think it's there's so many characters in the Arsenal teams going down the years that you're sport for choice, but right is certainly a, a good one. Mo, thank you so much for taking the time this morning to come on the show. We really appreciate it. I'm sure you've been able to get across. Yeah, yeah, there's no denying the love that you got for this Mate, club, that's for sure. All the way, you know, so having that faith and believing in the team and, and continue just, you know, keep 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 supporting that you know often for me I'm, I'm lucky enough to get hold of season ticket now you know back mm. growing up for me could never do that so I'm fortunate enough to now get hold of it and to me well, Mo, we wish you the absolute thing. best yeah. uh, with your with your future and uh, and we've hopefully seen you back on the track again very very soon and uh, again thank you for taking the time all right mate take care thank you bye See you later, man. Have See a fantastic later, day. Thank you all so much, guys, for listening to the show. If you've enjoyed it, please do drop a like on the Arsenal way and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. You can follow Mo on Twitter at Mo underscore Farah. You can follow myself at Tom Cantor Media. And of course, you can find everything at the Arsenal Way N5. See you soon, guys. Have a fantastic day. And as always, keep following us down the Arsenal Way. Glory, 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 glory,